Hey, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Life of Freedom YouTube channel. And today I wanna to compare some of the differences between a normal life and being a digital nomad so that if you are interested in making the leap and going to a different country, traveling the world, doing this all, living out of your suitcase and having a laptop, uh, if you're interested in doing that, this comparison will help with you to sort of distinguish some of the commonalities and differences between a digital nomad lifestyle and the actual lifestyle. When I was traveling for the last seven, six months, um, I was going to a lot of different countries. You know, I went to Peru for a month, I went to Spain, I went to Colombia, uh, I went to Thailand, I went to the Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, right? So I went to almost one country, yeah, one country per month. And I kind of, I learned a lot when it comes to how I work. I learned a lot about the way that I think, how I am when I'm traveling alone. Um, I learned a ton just in general about traveling and business and kind of how they work together and in some ways that they don't go together. So for me, the biggest difference when it came to the digital nomad lifestyle versus my traditional life in New York City was this concept of stability. And stability is something that's really interesting because when you don't have stability, you're going to different countries and you're having fun new activities and you're meeting new people. It can be very exciting emotionally. It's, it's so cool. Um, you learn a lot about yourself. You're discovering the world far off places in the map that you never thought that you might go to and seeing majestic views that you didn't even know existed on the planet. So emotionally, it's, it's very exciting. Um, the only problem with it though is when you are having so much fun, it's difficult to work. When I was in Chiang Mai specifically, um, I kind of had this realization where I was like, there's so much cool stuff to do here and it's so easy to get away with living for not very much money. You could eat, you could eat for like $3 per meal. And even in Cambodia, you could eat for like $1 per meal that it kind of makes you get a little bit lazy, at least for me. Um, I was feeling a little bit lazy. I'm like, what am I doing sitting in an air conditioned co-working space all day, staring at my laptop, you know, completing tasks when I could be going to a temple or I could be out in nature and enjoying the beautiful sunshine and trees and flowers, right? Or, or doing cool stuff like seeing uh, an elephant and, and playing around with the elephant and like feeding elephants, like or seeing tigers, right? So your mind just kind of um, you almost realize like, what is life about? Is it about sitting down and just staring at my computer screen for eight hours a day? Or is it about actually going out there, meeting people and embracing and enjoying life, meeting so many different types of human beings and animals and, and all of these things. It can be kind of like a mind trip, right? So it's kind of weird because I think a lot of the times when we look at a traditional society, let's just say like a city, right? A city, typically you have people that are a bit more productive than people that are in the countryside. And I started to think a little bit about this and why is it that people in the city are more productive than people that are in the countryside? And a big part, I think, of productivity is just the way that society is structured. When you're living in a city, there's so much pressure from people around you to compete, to do well, to spend after hours at work and to make sure that you're putting a lot of time into your job. There's a lot of social pressure when you're living in New York City to keep working because everyone else is working. You go to a cafe, everyone's on a laptop, right? And also there's just not as much fun stuff to do always um, when it comes to like nature or activities. So you pretty much are like designed de facto that when something is really boring, there's not much to do that you should be working. Like this is your responsibility. You should be taking this seriously. A city is by its very nature designed for people to come there and to be productive in office building. And that's how society works. If you want it more of like a laid back, relaxed lifestyle, you would probably be in a tree house, right? Somewhere in, in Thailand, just enjoying nature and taking it day by day and being in the present moment. So these two energies are very polar opposite to each other. That, and what I've kind of found for myself was that I'm very productive when there's not much to do in life. When it's really boring, like during coronavirus right now, when there's not um, very much to do, I tend to be super productive because there's nothing else to do, right? And that's how I have fun is making new products, writing new books, uh, putting out YouTube videos, etc. So it kind of constrains my mind a little bit and it forces me to be productive versus when I was in uh, you know, traveling and meeting all of these cool people and having lots of activities that I could do. 
then I was just in a different mindset. I was more interested in having fun. I was more interested in experiencing life than just sitting in a, in a windowless room looking at my laptop and getting work done. Another major difference um, when it comes to the digital nomad lifestyle is that you have to be aware of time zones. And I didn't fully grasp uh, this point until I started to travel to other regions of the world that were not on the Eastern Standard Time Zone, which is where New York is. When I went to Spain, which is probably like five or six hours ahead, I think, um, and I was you know, figuring out coaching calls, and I was figuring out scheduling podcasts, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible, right? This is, this is gonna be nuts. Because for me, when it was nighttime, it was their daytime. And it, it sort of screwed everything up for a little bit because I hadn't anticipated that because I was, I was going from Peru to Spain, which is kind of like a big leap, right? And in Peru, it wasn't super a big difference in time zone wise, but going to Spain was like ma a massive difference for me with the time zone. So I had to be aware of that. And that would be different than if you're just sitting and having a normal kind of life. You don't have to be aware as much as the different countries that you're going to how that affects your time, how that affects your scheduling. If you have uh, you know, a, a location independent job, how that affects your teammates that you're working with, the customers that you have to deal with, and these, these different components of running your life. And even more so when I went to uh, Thailand, you're on the opposite side of the world. The, the time difference is massive, right? You're, you're basically, when it's, when it's daytime in Thailand, it's gonna be nighttime in New York City. The, these opposite differences made doing things like podcasts, phone calls, um, interviews, et cetera, you know, coaching calls, all these things were so much more difficult because I was on the other side of the world. And I had to keep that into, keep that into account. And it was kind of like almost a, just another problem in my head that I had to solve. Now, obviously the flip side of that is you're in another country and there's so many neat things you can do. You can um, really blend into the local culture, get a sense of what the food is like, um, and just have lots of really epic experiences, right? So there's obviously the, the trade-off, but th that is something that is very different than if you're just for an entire six months in the same place, you don't have to worry about that. If you're bouncing around countries every couple of weeks, then that is something you really have to take into consideration, as well as, um, when you're traveling, I would say that one of the more you know, difficult things for me um, as I was going out there to these different countries and trying to keep up my, my business was I had to plan for everything that I was doing, right? And you do obviously, if you're gonna be doing a vacation, let's just say, you can do two things. You can either book a tourist agency that's going to um, assemble a basic itinerary for you each day. Maybe if you're going on a cruise, they're gonna uh, assemble a basic itinerary for you, or you can plan it all yourself. Maybe a copy the itinerary of some blogger out there or come up with your own. It's very strenuous, it's a lot of work. Well, take that work and now think about planning the next six months of your life from country to country, from city to city, from airline to airline, right? It's a lot of extra work. And for me, it almost felt like it was a part-time job where I was doing my normal job, I was having fun, and then on the weekends or after work, I was having to plan out, okay, what am I gonna do this next month? Where am I gonna go? Where am I gonna stay? Is it gonna be an Airbnb? Is it gonna be a hostel? Um, so that there's kind of like a lot of extraneous planning that goes into it. But also, the, the more I started to do that, initially the first like month, it was kind of hard to do that. But as I started to do that, I started to get more used to that. And it was a lot easier. Towards the end, it was like, a, it was like very simple. I was so in line with um, that like regular planning, just in the habit of it, that it wasn't causing me any issues whatsoever. But when you're first kind of starting, you probably are gonna have that experience of being like, ah, I don't wanna have to plan this. Where am I gonna go? There's so many uncertainties and question marks. And I found that the more that I can have some kind of an itinerary that's written down, even if I don't necessarily, you know, stay with that exact itinerary and it might change and mold over time, it makes planning a heck of a lot easier. When you're just there working in Boston, Massachusetts or in, New York City or in California for a good six months, you don't have to think as much about your itinerary. You might have to think of like, what, what should we do this weekend? Where should I go with a, a restaurant for my friends? Like there's that kind of basic social planning, but it's not as drastic as like, 
What am I, what's the best airline to take? What date should I be leaving for my flight? What should I be bringing? Should I have a, a luggage storage for my other extraneous luggage that I don't need to take on this like micro trip? There's just a little bit more planning that goes into it when you are a digital nomad. I think that the, the most like enlightening experience that I had uh, being a nomad and this being a major difference from living your own life like in a small town in the United States is that your mind just starts to become like expanded and there's no other way to say it. You just start to have such an incredible level of awareness and self-awareness, um, awareness of American culture, awareness of the way that you look and how people perceive you and meeting people from different cultures, different countries, different backgrounds. Um, it's so, it opens up your eyes to the world so much. And you even start to learn about history that you didn't even know about, or you start to meet people and get their perception of where you're from, right? And you kind of have this exchange of learning about each other's culture. And it's just like, it's this magical experience because when you're just living in one location for a good year, you kind of have this groupthink mentality, even if you don't realize it. Like you might think you're a very creative person. I think I'm a pretty, you know, open-minded person, <clears throat> but just going outside of my little box and being able to meet other people from different ways of life, you realize there are different um, solutions for the problems that we encounter every day in life. And our culture, our society here, I'm just talking about the United States, we have certain select answers for those problems, but other cultures have different answers. Other cultures have different ways of doing it. They have different, in some ways positive, sometimes negative, um, ways of addressing common social issues. And this is, this is just, it's not even about Americans. When I was in Colombia, um, and a more better example, when I was in Peru, I was trying to get a SIM card and you have to like give so much self-identifying information just to get like even a burner phone where you have to give like your passport and you have to give all this uh, information about your address and you know, et cetera. It was just like so strange. It took me like an hour to get a phone. I was like, why is this taking so long? This is stupid. In the United States, I can just go and buy a burner phone and I don't need to give any of this stuff. Um, and I was talking with some of the people that I met in Peru and I'm like, that, that makes no sense. And they were like, really? You don't have to give this in uh, America? They didn't realize that it's different in other areas of the world as well, that, that life just works differently. Um, and also being in Colombia, like trying to get, I wasn't able to get a SIM card because you have to be a Colombian resident, but then there's like a way around it. And it was just this whole big hassle. I'm like, why can't I just buy a freaking SIM card to use my phone, right? It, it was just so foreign to me, but just talking with people in Colombia, they also didn't realize some of the legal um, things that we go through when it comes to just like being able to easily have your phone, not having to worry as much about credit, right? Um, and some of the things that happen in other countries or being in um, Thailand and seeing the influence of Buddhism there and the, the way that, that kind of infects their, their mindset in a positive way and how it allows them to, to think with a little bit more mindfulness and a little bit more present awareness and being aware of things like your breath. And that was something that in America, there aren't very many people I meet who meditate on a regular basis, but there it was like, they were professionals, right? I, I remember talking with someone and they were like, why are you talking about this? Why are you teaching about this? Like, I already know how to, everyone here meditates, right? If you're interested in, you know, if you, if you go to the, the temple and stuff. So, and then it was one time I gave, um, I didn't realize this is like, I gave a girl flowers and I thought they were like nice flowers, but they were apparently like for praying at a temple. Um, which is kind of funny because I just thought they were like nice flowers on Valentine's Day, but they, they were not the right, not the right ones to get. So you'll, you'll realize all these like little differences and it makes you appreciate humanity and it makes you re-examine your own life through a different lens. It kind of helps you get out of your own, um, way of viewing the world and almost as though you then are granted this extraneous vantage point where you're viewing your life from a mountaintop. And it's like, you suddenly start to realize all of these things. Like, why is it I do it this way? Why is it that, you know, I made that decision? Why do I believe these things? And it opens up your mind and your imagination in a way that's nothing like it. I can't compare it to anything else. So travel is beautiful for that reason. And when you're a digital nomad, you're incorporating travel as a part of your lifestyle that goes harmoniously with you earning an income, right? if you have a low education, independent income source. So it's kind of, to me, like the most uh, enlightening path 
that you can take. You could hammer away in a, an office job, getting a lot of work done, being very productive for you know two years of your life, and that's awesome. I've done that, um, just being really focused. But or you could spend two years of your life in more of a, gro a spiritual growth stage where you're not only getting work done and maintaining your career, but you're also growing and enlightening um, different areas of your brain, different areas of your soul. Social services are another kind of difference between having a regular lifestyle and, and being a, a digital nomad. You take a lot of things for granted when you are living in a country, your home country. Like you take for granted the fact that you can easily go and get a doctor that um, people speak your own language, that if you need certain you know, social assistance that you're probably somewhat familiar with that in your own country, you know how to pay taxes, um, all these like little things that just go with living a normal lifestyle, you kind of take for granted. When you're traveling as a digital nomad, you suddenly have to take some of these other things like into account. For example, just even visas, right? Being aware of you can't stay in a country for as long as you would like, you have to be aware of the visa requirements and also the ways in which you can get a visa, whether that's going under as a education, you're going and taking some language learning classes, um, you're starting a business, you, you have a job there in that, in that country. You have to be more aware of visa requirements. You have to be more aware of things like, what happens if I do fall ill and I get sick? Can I go to a healthcare provider if I have international health insurance? What if I don't have international health insurance? What happens if an emergency occurs and I need to get evacuated out of that country um, or I you know, have some kind of emergency, I need to go to the emergency room, right? These are like little things that we take for granted wherever you're living, for, wherever your, your home country is. But when you're in a different country, you then have to be aware of the social services and also the government, the reigning government at the time. Um, when the coronavirus wave was hitting the Philippines, I was stuck there and under lockdown and they have the, the curfew, right? And I was trying to go into a government office to ask them just simple questions like, hey, do I still need to renew my visa? How do I do that, right? Um, and my, is international travel allowed? Because they, they announced that um, domestic travel was being closed and they kind of, some people, it was very mixed. Like some people were telling me international travel was closed, other people were saying it wasn't closed. So I was trying to go into a government office to get that question answered, very simple question, but I wasn't allowed in because I didn't have a mask and all the masks were sold out in my, my area of the, the Philippines that I was. So it was like, it was a catch 22. Now in America, it's like, that's very rare where I wouldn't be able to go into a government office because the government works for you, right? But in other countries, there isn't that same balance of power, right? There isn't that same level of entitlement. And even things like in the Philippines, the, the president's saying that he's gonna like shoot people who go out in during after curfew. Like that's not something that you can do in America, but that's something you can do in other countries. So there, there are differences in social services that you need to be aware of. I talk a little bit about this in my course on how to be a digital nomad and get into things like taxes and health insurance and what you should know when you are traveling to these different countries, visa requirements, best locations and regions. So I cover that a little bit more in depth in that course, which I can link up down below, but that's a major difference um, where you are a guest in the countries that you're going to and you have to know how they operate from a governmental standpoint if you wanna be there for a longer period of time. The final, element that I kind of wanted to talk about in this video uh, is friendship and social circles. Because when you are in a location and you've made a bunch of friends, you spent a couple of years there, right? That's your, your, your friend's circle. That's like your social circle. That's where you're doing when you, when you have a weekend or you have some free time off, you're going and spending time with them, right? And then all of a sudden when you are a digital nomad, you kind of are cut off from that social circle and it can be difficult because your parents, um, your friends, they might be wanting to have more contact with you but you just can't because you're so busy or you're traveling and such. And it can make it so that you have to be much more selective about the people that you wanna keep in contact with and the energy you're gonna put into continuing to develop those friendships. If you don't, you're just probably gonna be burnt out and spend most of your time trying to talk with your old friends when you're also meeting new people. Whereas also some of those people aren't gonna be in your life for, for a very long time. So it's kind of finding a little bit of a balance there. But for me, it was kind of challenging as well because if you are on the other side of the world, when it's your night, it's their morning. So you're not always synced up 
um, in that way as well. So this is something also to be aware of as a major difference. If you're in one location, you're gonna have a group of friends that you're doing things with on the weekend and when you're traveling, um, you're gonna basically be having to make new friends and integrating into new groups of friends and maybe keeping in, in contact with them, maybe not. It's, it's really a different kind of, um, just a whole different way of life in that way. So I hope that some of these differences between um, a digital nomad lifestyle and a normal lifestyle were helpful for you and a little bit, shed a little bit of light onto this. Uh, I also have some other videos out there about how to be a digital nomad. If you're interested, you can go to my YouTube channel and check those out, but give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time.